everybody, last day. Hope you're all feeling very proud of yourselves and um, feeling good. I'm very proud of all of you and all of us. It's been really awesome to like, you know, pack this into just a month, you know, and now this month or, you know, September 14th through October 15th is, I think, so much richer because we, we carried a little bit more on our shoulders. And this is a huge point, you know, behind or underneath the, the, the practice, the continued practice of yoga. Carry more on your shoulders. You are strong enough. Um, you know, delay gratification, delay rest, keep applying yourself and you will be rewarded. You know, look in hindsight and realize, you know, how rich and dense life is. So with all that, what are we going to do today? What are we going to talk about today? Uh, just to sort of like wrap everything up into the main point, I'm just going to share a story. You know, I had a, a, a really profound epiphany at a temple in India. So I want to share that with you. Um, and then get back into the heart of this, which is meditation. And then we're going to explore a different type of kumbhaka, sahit kumbhaka. So, you know, a different, a different way of approaching this technique. And so the epiphany, the story, uh, I was with a friend and we were outside a very popular city, Rishikesh, and there was an asphalt truck driver whose tire was flat and we decided to help him out. And so we helped him out, we changed his tire and he asked us if we needed a ride anywhere. And we, in our, you know, uh, in our desire for adventure, just said, take us wherever you're going. And so he took us all the way up to the mountain into a tiny town called Nilkant. And in this tiny town, there was nothing really there. Uh, we decided to spend the night. Very quiet town, but as night fell, we started hearing all of this clamor, these like cymbals banging into one another and chanting and singing. Uh, and our minds sort of went crazy with like, what could this be? This town was so quiet all day. And now that the sun has fallen, we can hear, you know, a, a, a festival, essentially. Uh, and then we walk out of our hotel room and find our way to the town center. Uh, and at that center is an enormous tree. And underneath the tree, you can sort of walk on the ceiling or the roof of this structure. Underneath that structure, at the base of the tree, uh, all the men of the village were, were doing their, their evening ceremonies and they encircled the tree with cymbals and drums and were, were chanting. At this point, I didn't know, you know what chanting necessarily was, who they were chanting to, but my friend and I decided to sit down and meditate and so we did. And then once they were done, they opened their temple to us and we walked through and after we sort of made our rounds through the temple, they gave us a handful of sugar. We ate the sugar uh, and then we sort of strolled down the steps and as I looked back, I saw the top of the temple, which was an image of Vishnu, right? The blue god, the preserver god or preserver force of Hinduism resting on Adasesh, the multi-headed cobra. Behind him was this phosphorescent rainbow um, pyramid structure with all like the Indian Rajas, all the Indian kings sort of lining the steps. And for whatever reason, in that moment, I realized, oh, this grand narrative, this insane metaphor is, is designed for one purpose, and it is to protect the epiphany of consciousness throughout centuries, throughout millennia, because the rishis, the seers, and the yogis, and the mystics, and the siddhas, the you know, uniquely intelligent and insightful people of you know, archaic times understood the significance of this little spark within us. And so the reason I'm sharing this is the whole point of this process, of every breath technique, of every moment of our lives, to yogis and to meditators is to build a continuously increasing relationship to your consciousness and not what you are conscious of. And because the yogis really learned how to internalize, they realized what they were conscious of was not just their environment, not just their sensations, but their thoughts and their identity as well. And so if we take that to heart and, and sort of look at how we, as well as most of the people we know, play out our lives and spend our time and spend our energy, most of us fixate on the objects of awareness. We fixate on ourselves. We fixate on our identity. We fixate on our future. We fixate on the, the world. We fixate on others. We fixate on the environment. And very few of us uh, actually take serious time to fixate on the subject, which is the deep consciousness inside that I hope you're learning to touch by the end of your practice.
And so with that, you know, consciousness is everything. Hinduism and yoga essentially divinize consciousness. And when you hear a Hindu or a yogi talk about God or Brahman or the divine or Shiva or Lakshmi or Vishnu, uh, they are essentially talking about consciousness. And so what is meditation then? Meditation is not kumbhaka. Kumbhaka helps us meditate, helps us extract that consciousness. Meditation is the true absence of effort, meaning that you can hold your body in a, sustainably in a non-reactive state. Your lungs are just breathing themselves. Your posture is just holding itself. Um, your organs are functioning on themselves. You renounce all control over that, over your organism. And so it is the absence of effort. And in that, the absence of reactivity, the absence of reaching. It is also the absence of unconsciousness, meaning that you are completely aware of the present moment without, without boundary, right? So you're aware of what's outside you. You're aware of what's inside you. You're aware that you're listening or your ears are listening. You're aware that your body is feeling. You're aware that your mind is thinking. But all of these, again, are external processes or environments or landscapes that are functioning on their own. You are no longer doing any of that because you've disconnected. So it is the absence of unconsciousness. Something like the sun sort of shining light, uh, you know, in every direction within our solar system. And then finally, it is simultaneously the internalization of the self. So you are nestled deep, deep, deep within, and from that center point, your consciousness radiates out to be aware of everything, uh, and you've renounced all effort. So I just want you to think about that while we get into our practice today. And, you know, our practice today should make that all very approachable. Uh, the last thing I wanted to say, um, Eknad Eswaran is a you know, lovely teacher and he has a really beautiful description of consciousness that helped me sort of rationalize it. Um, reality is like an apartment building with however many trillions of, of homes, of rooms, and in that doors. And as many doors as they are, there are, as different as they might be, if we took the time to knock on every single door, uh, the, the inhabitant of that room would be the same thing. And that's how consciousness sort of exists within a yogi or within a meditator's mind. Uh, we are all different, but our consciousness is the same. And in that, the word yoga, unity, oneness, actually becomes real. When we associate as that consciousness, we can see past the differences, past the illusion of separation and variance, and really connect to ourselves as, as sort of reflections of one force. Uh, and that would be consciousness. So... A lot of talk about consciousness. This is all about consciousness and hopefully as you develop with your practice you realize or you, you start to feel that consciousness more and more regularly. So what is Sahit Kumbhaka? Sahit means to be possessed of. And so in this we are possessed by Kumbhaka. This is just the natural breath. So today what we're going to do is spend 20 minutes just breathing deeply and steadily and what you'll notice is Every breath in, there is a momentary blip of kumbhaka at the very top, and every exhale, there is a momentary blip of kumbhaka at the bottom. And the poetry is this, kumbhaka has been there our entire lives, every three seconds or so, every, however long it takes for us to take a breath, there has been a kumbhaka. And all we've done in these 31 days is explore something that has always been there very much like yoga, very much like sadhana, this practice. Consciousness has always been there. We've always been connected to it. We've always relied upon it. But yoga just takes the time to open it up and really explore it in a, in a specific and acute way. And so you're just going to breathe deeply and normally, steady inhales, steady exhales, and notice the natural occurrence of kumbhaka, the natural occurrence of a pause at the top of your breath, and the natural occurrence of a pause at the bottom of your breath. Beyond that, let the mind wander, let the mind sit and be focused. Uh, you are not the mind, so the mind is free to do what it wishes. Hold the body in stillness, or better said, let the body hold itself in stillness, and let's see where this takes us. Cool. All right, everyone. Strong seated pose. And in just one breath, once you assume your posture, notice how familiar your posture is to you now. In one breath, drop into what you know of as your practice. In one breath, touch dharmata, the ground of your being.
And before we can knock on the door of consciousness, we have to be honest with ourselves. We have to present ourselves in our wholeness. And that demands personal sincerity. Acknowledge duk. Duk in confusion. Duk in unmet expectations. Duk in insecurity. Duk in fear. Duk in illness. Duk in old age. Duk in regret. No need to linger, but powerful to acknowledge. Just take one more breath in and out here. I suffer. And that is part of the experience. As you inhale, be sure to feel your belly and your chest swell in all directions, forwards, backwards, left, right, up and down. And as you exhale, of course, feel your chest and torso recede in these directions, but stay tall in the spine. Breathe a little bit more slowly than you want to, leaning or guiding your nervous system into unnatural calm, just a bit. Sahit Kumbhaka. Possessed of Kumbhaka. At the top of every inhale, there is a pause. At the bottom of every exhale, there is a pause. Just pay attention to those pauses for the next 20 minutes. Let the mind wander or let it stay still. Stay non-reactive and consider consciousness from time to time. Be patient here, enjoy, good luck, good work.
Notice every time the breath stops, there is a boost in presence. Try to exist in these spikes of presence. The stories of the Upanishads, the stories of the Mahabharata. They all are petals, ideas that protect a single insight so that that insight can be carried through generations. The story allows us to interact with this epiphany. It is the story of a would-be hero with the mysterious seed of potential lodged inside them. At a certain point in that hero's life, they are compelled to enter a brand new world that is both mysterious and alluring, both beautiful and terrifying.
And as this would-be hero traverses the alien landscape of their existence and their adventure, as they learn and become more, they eventually make their way back home as someone brand new, but also the same. And so that home, that beginning point, and that finish line, that mysterious seed of potential in yogic thought is consciousness, is that feeling of presence when the breath stops. And the metaphor of that journey that we can all identify with is the story of our identity and our lives and our challenges and our obstacles. And so if you can feel that spike in presence and if you can sense it as consciousness, now associate it as home, as the starting line, as that which was there before the beginning and the finish line and that which will be there after the end. Inhale, arms reach up and overhead, interlace your fingers, index fingers point up to the sky. Maximum intensity, kumbhaka. Just one and a half rounds. Inhale, hold, exhale, hold. Then a secondary inhale, a secondary top retention. After that one and a half rounds, with dramatic grace, release your wrists to your knees. Sahit Kumbhaka. Feel that natural momentary pause, listening to the world around you.
as you take the final breaths of your challenge, listening to the world around you, behold the story of your consciousness. Appreciate every second in breath retention, every second in pain, every second in anxiety, every second in CO2 saturation, in tapas, in that acidic fire, was to help you behold a secret tale. I am alive. I exist through the story of the physical world. But at the same time, I am always rooted in the same place, rooted within my awareness. And now that awareness is more of a home. With dramatic grace and dramatic sincerity, bring your hands to heart center. Internalize your awareness, pay attention to that innermost thing, not the body, not the mind, not time, not space, not desire, not dissatisfaction. The absence of effort. You're just sitting there. The absence of unconsciousness. You are aware of everything you can be aware of. And aware that there is more that you are not aware of. Thumb knuckles to third eye center. Focus on that tiny point of subtle sensation, the blood flow and nerve pulses between the skin of your thumb knuckles and the skin of your forehead. Lock on to that minuscule bullseye. So much so that other parts of the body blur out. Time is forgotten. Self is forgotten. What observes that sensation? What observes the mind focusing on that sensation? Home. With an exhale, release your wrists to your knees, index fingers, touch the thumb. Gnyan Mudra the hand gesture of wisdom. I know home, I know consciousness. I know the starting line, I know the finish line. Try to maintain this connection with an inhale, eyes open, and the stare is blank. Take a couple more breaths here, I am still meditating. Sahit Kumbhaka, the natural retention is still there, reminding you of this inner space. Dilate your pupils, blink your eyes, wash the trance away. <laughs>